All right, let's welcome to the Misfit Nation, a 21-year Army veteran, retired as a first sergeant in 2020 at the peak of the pandemic. He got out of the Army, he transitioned, and realized that he has gifts he can give to, to other veterans, so he became an author and started his blueprint for leadership, his mental toughness, performance, and physical success. So without further ado, let's bring in Sylvester Jenkins the third. How are you, Sylvester? What's going on, Rich? How you doing? I'm doing phenomenal, man. Great, great day. Uh, you're, you're representing well right there. Uh, both Army veterans, you got UGA on there. Let's uh, knock on some wood for tonight. Let's hope everything goes well tonight. Absolutely. So, Sylvester, if you'd like to uh, go back as far as you want in, uh, in your life and come back to where we are now, give us a little bit about you so the audience knows you, gets a feel for you, and uh, what you've done in your career and to where you are now. Absolutely. So uh, I'm originally from Columbus, Georgia. Uh, I grew up in a single-parent home, uh, gang and drug-infested neighborhood. During that time, I was uh, breaking into people's homes, doing all the wrong things. And uh, I was looking for a sense of hope, a way of life, and just try to find identity and purpose. So, of course, I joined the military to try and, you know, find that. And uh, just along my journey, I felt uh, multiple hardships while in the military, like I think a, a lot of our brothers and sisters in arms do. And uh, I, I faced uh, UCMJ action. I had two Article 15 throughout my career, one for um, testing positive on the UA and then also another one for getting into an altercation with a senior leader. Uh, so my, my first couple of years in the military didn't start off the best. I was, uh, I experienced a, a acrimonious divorce while deployed and went through the motions of coming back home to nothing. Uh, during that time frame, I just felt like I was in a sunken place because I had so much bottled up uh, aggression, hurt. Uh, you know, you have so much uh, pride that we deal with. And then a lot of times we are afraid to seek um, that assistance and getting through those tough moments that we have. And uh, I contemplated suicide. I was on the borderline to just go ahead and end and everything because I felt like by doing that, I wouldn't have to suffer anymore. The things that I was going through and experiencing, it wouldn't be like uh, something that would uh, I wouldn't have to worry about anymore. And uh, it, it was a troubling time for me, but I was able to make it through. And uh, going through that uh, journey of overcoming those battles that I faced, I was able to realize that there was something that I was uh, capable of doing because I wasn't able to control the people around me. I wasn't able to control the situation that I experienced, but I was able to control myself. And I think Michael Jackson said it best. Uh, he said, if you wanna make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. And that's what I did. So that's a little bit about me. That's outstanding. And bringing Michael into that, you know, a lot of people make fun of the man, but he, he, he gave messages in almost every song he wrote. Uh, nearly every song he wrote and everything he did had a message behind it. And, and that's a very strong one. And if you want to make a change, you got to look in the mirror. And uh, I always tell people when they complain about the community, complain about things in their area. I said, you got to fix your house first. Right. Fix your house. Then you can fix your block, then you fix the neighborhood and, and spread it out. And I think that comes with, uh, I think both of our backgrounds from being in the military, we learn to fix self first, even though, like you said, as leaders, we don't do that. Right. We worry about everybody else until our head's about to explode. And then, oh, well, let me get that oil change real quick here and check ourselves. And it's usually too late by that point. And like you, you, you almost hit the wall. You almost hit the wall yourself, but you've seen the light and came back out with a message to help others. And I applaud right. you for that. Thank you. So uh, what made you write? Did you write your first book while you were still serving or was it immediately after? I was going through the motions of, of the transition. You know, uh, one of the toughest times that we face is not only just um, going in the military because of the fear of the unknown, but it's that transition. I don't think we get enough time, honestly, to transition from soldier to civilian. I think, you know, you have, you just spent like uh, X amount of years of your life doing the same thing repeatedly over and over again. You're no longer a civilian, you're a soldier. And now you're going back to a civilian and, you know, just going through that motions of that transition, man, it can be hard. It can cause a lot of anxiety. It can cause depression. It can cause a lot of stress. And um, just going through the motions of dealing with that, of course, the pandemic happened, like the same time I was making this transition. And when we was on quarantine, uh, I just went through the motions of just trying to find myself, build my identity, figure out who I was for me, and um, just realizing that I started doing what, um, what they suggested in behavioral health, which was journaling. And when I started to journal, I started to just write, you know, some of the things that was beneficial for me 
in making that transition, not only in the military, but just life in general. And it was uh, a possible way for other people to receive this message was through a book. So I turned everything that I experienced, everything that I dealt with, the research and all those other things into a book called Winning the Battle Within. It's uh, right here, it's just a, a little go-to guide because I think and believe that one of the major things that we don't harp on a lot is the, uh, the strength of resilience. Resilience is a strong key factor in winning the battle within with everything that we deal with. And a lot of things that we face are not external, they're internal. And this up here controls everything you experience because your thoughts drive your emotions. Your emotions drive your behavior, which affects your performance. And if we're able to master our minds, have that self-mastery, we'll be able to move forward, be phenomenal, be great, and fulfill those potentials and that purpose that we have amongst this world. Exactly. And you hit a key point there. You said transition was when it started. You were probably 18 when you joined the military. So it's 18 right. years of life. Then you did 21 years. Your whole adult life was military structure. Do this, do that. I wake up at excellent. Well, oh, dark 30, get ready, get PT. Make sure your soldiers are good. Make sure you're good. Work until dark and then start again the next day. And then all of a sudden with six months left in your career, you go to Soldier for Life uh, tap and they tell you, hey, we're done. Here's how to write a resume. Get on LinkedIn and, and you'll be good to go. And then Absolutely. you take them boots off and you don't know what to do with your hands anymore. It's like, what do I do? I don't know what to do with myself. Now you're right. civilian again, but you're an adult civilian. It's way different. That's a hard transition. How did you manage to, not just by journaling, I'm sure you had other techniques you did to get through that successfully. Oh, yes, absolutely. So what I did was uh, I pretty much made a commitment to myself that I, I was going to do everything in my power to try to figure out a way. Uh, of course, uh, in that in that transition, uh, I started networking with other people who had already made that transition, tried to find mentors just like we did in the military, find those people who already were successful in making those transitions, find out a, a lot of the key things that they experienced and then some of the things that helped them or, or was beneficial for them because you can't put yourself in a in a circle with people who don't know exactly what you experience or about to experience you have to surround yourself with people who already been there and done that so i changed my circle uh also you know changed my mindset when it came to those situations because you know it, the pandemic was hard for everybody not just military wise but civilian wise as well so jobs were scarce so that check that you receive on the first and the 15th that full payment is no longer there. So, you know, it's kind of a difficult on the financial level in order to keep pushing forward. So uh, those are some of the things I did. And I just also reflect. And once I did that, I, I changed my routine up. I changed my routine from what I steadily did in the military to start integrating more things with my family, start just being a more appreciative, start developing an attitude of gratitude, just being thankful for being able to serve those years in the military and uh, not be able to feel as though um, I'm, I'm cooped up in this bottle. So those are some of the things that I did in order to make that transition. Those are all definitely uh, great strategies there. That I like that you said you built your network around a different circle. Because if, if you stay around people with the, don't have any idea what you've gone through or what you're about to go through, it doesn't really help you except they're going to say, I got your back, I'm with you. But then they're saying it, they may mean it, but they can't really help you. And, but right. Like for us, as we come out, you want someone that has been there and you also want someone that is already on the other side, that mm -hmm. has already successfully made it through that minefield. And I mean, early in your career, you had to have good men mentors to get through your, your two stumblings when you were a young, young soldier, probably private specialist. There had to be a mentor right there, a squad leader, a tune sergeant and said, hey, Sylvester, come here. This is what you need to do to get your head straight and get out of Columbus, Georgia and go right. straight to the world. Do you remember that person? Is he, uh, he or she still prominent? Uh, no, I never really had uh, somebody as far as uh, a particular person. It was multiple people. Uh, it's a long list, man. I go down a whole bunch of folks, man, that had like gave me little nuggets here and there, man. Just uh, just keep me uplifted throughout the time span of me going through my hardships. And it, that's what we all need, uh, especially when we stumble in the military. Because you're either going to have the leader that's above you just pummeling you once you stumble, or you're right. going to have the one that puts their arm around you, gives you a Coke, and says, look, man, what do you want to do with your life? And right. at that point, you got to make the decision. I, I want to, this has to be my life for now, because I don't want to go back where I was. I want right. to keep my trajectory going forward. 
Uh, and that's how you developed into who you are now. But uh, you became a first sergeant in the military. That's a, an enormous uh, event for many people. A lot of people don't make it that far as E8 in the Army because it, it kind of stuff at the top. It kind of gets a little tight and you have to be the top performer. So you became a top performer to get there, right. which is also awesome. So what is your blueprint for leadership? My, oh, so my blueprint for leadership is that I feel there are several qualities that all leaders should have. And by having these several qualities, you'll be successful in anything. Because one thing I realized, so for me, I was a 91 Bravo during the time frame of me being in the military, which was a mechanic. Now, I wasn't the best mechanic. I failed tremendously on multiple occasions. Hey, if you came to me telling me that was a problem with your vehicle, I might not be able to help you as much as I probably, you know, uh, thought I could. But at the same time, I did the best that I could. But one thing I realized across the board that was needed was leadership. Leadership would never change wherever you go, whether you're in the military or out of the military. And some of the qualities that I realized that was beneficial for me as far as helping me to be successful was our uh, influence, serving leadership, self-leadership, motivation, effective communication, emotional intelligence, and goals. Those several things that I, I inflicted in my, uh, my organization was beneficial for me. And by mapping out this, this, uh, those several qualities and continuing to uh, step forward in, the, in, in those things was, made me successful in every way possible. Because you got to think about, like I said earlier, about the influence that you have around you. Are they propelling you to go to that next level? Are they investing in you? Are they pouring into you, telling you what you can be compared to where you are? If they're not doing that, you don't need to be around them. You don't need to be stagnant. You can't soar with eagles running with chickens. That's just plain and simple. And then when you think about that servant leadership, you're, you're, uh, you're meant to, it's not about you. Plain and simple, it's not about you. It's about the people around you. You wouldn't be successful as you are in the military, if you don't have the right people or you're influencing these people to be greater than where they are, it's not about you. So everything that you do, you can sit there and complain about every everything that you have going on, first sergeant, sergeant, whatever you might be, but those soldiers need you. Those soldiers, are they come first. You know how they say mission first, soldier always? It's a fact. Keep that in your brain and everything that you do. And then when you think about that, uh, that self-leadership, now that self-leadership, when you got to do a PMCS on yourself, you have to do a PMCS on yourself because if you're not good, you won't be good for your organization. You won't be that asset that you truly need to be for that unit. And when you think about doing that PMCS, you got to, hey, you got to be vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable. Some people see it as a weakness. I see it as a superpower because that transparency will get you through a lot of things that you might go through and experience. It's okay not to be okay. Some people don't realize that, but it's okay. And then you think about that motivation. Come on, man. Like, I don't know nobody that doesn't need a little motivation in their life from time to time. That's what gets you started in the morning. You do a little PT. Okay. You get them endorphins going. Fine. That's good. But what's going to help you carry on throughout that day? You have to have that mindset in order to keep moving forward and motivate your troops in order to get that mission done. That's how you do that. But you have to set goals. If you don't set the goal, if you don't make the vision, it won't happen. It will not happen. And then you think about that effective communication. We didn't come from the same background. We grew up around different morals and values and all those other things. But the Army, the military, shifts that by giving you these Army values. They give you a set of standards to live by. And when you think about those things that the Army has, as long as you keep on implementing those things around that and build your vision and your goals off that, you will continue to be successful in everything that you do. So those are the com uh, common factors that was able to benefit uh, benefit me throughout my time in the military. And those are all great factors there. It's all a great blueprint in that you put the footwork in, the, the feet work, I guess, uh, 21 years of footwork in and building this, uh, building you into who you are now. And, and your background from Columbus, George, like you said, you were just like any other teenager in the city getting in trouble because you were looking for a way to get money or that fast money that or do whatever you had to do to to make it out of Columbus, Georgia, or for me, New Jersey. And then we we take that step through MEPS and getting there and the shock and awe factor gets you, but you're still that kid. You still have that knucklehead kid in your head and you had to evolve. You evolved over 21 years into the man you are now. You wrote the book, uh, Winning the Battle Within, and the battle within is, is bad for, it can be seen as different things for many people with, and many of our brothers and sisters right now as they're 
in the last, uh, I guess, even active duty soldiers, the third quarter of 2021, 163 took their lives in the third quarter alone, 460 right. something for the year so far before the fourth quarter was tallied. And that's a battle, like you said, it's not, it is okay to not be okay. You have to see it and, and take those uh, chances to get help. Some of us, like uh, when our, we came in younger, we were always taught that if you went to get help, you were weak. Right. Especially as you became a leader, uh, you got to work. You, you can't right. be hurt. There's no way you can be hurt because if the, your guys or girls see you hurt, then they're going to think you're weak. You got to right. stay up all the time. Take take this whole bottle of Motrin. It'll make you feel better because <laughs> your kidneys will be breaking. Your liver will be breaking down, but you'll be all right. And, right. and that has a toll on us as well because it mentally it tells us we can never seek help. Right. Until it's too late. And like both of us probably buy and get help while I was out of the military. I tried to get it while in. It didn't work out. Right. They told me I was a senior leader. I didn't need it. I said, I do need it. That's why I'm here. But okay, you're the guy who has the certificate on the wall. I don't. And <clears throat> so when I finally got help, I went to a civilian doctor here in Clarksville and we just chatted. And uh, he got it all off me, off my chest. And I felt way better. And like you did, I started to think uh, positively. Uh, thinking about how I can help others was through servant leadership and things like that. And that helps a lot of people tremendously. Are there any organizations that you are involved with uh, either veteran wise or non veteran wise that promote servant leadership for others to get involved in? Uh, so what I have been uh, working with is uh, operation reboot. I don't know if you heard about that. Yeah. Uh, they help, you know, veterans who are uh, veterans and active duty service members who uh, been diagnosed with PTSD, anxiety, and depression. They've been able to just come up with courses and other things in order to be beneficial to help you through that transition of what you might go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Because we all face adversity. Adversity is inevitable. It's something that's going to happen. But uh, when it comes to just overcoming that battle, or winning that battle, you have to seek it. You have to seek help. You just can't sit there and just think you can get over it by yourself. You have to be open, willing, and vulnerable and coachable in order to make that happen. Coachable is very important because sometimes <laughs> you say you're vulnerable, you say you want help, but then the doc or the person on the other side of the table says to do something. I'm not doing that. I know better than that. Right. That doesn't work for me. That works for that guy or that girl. It's not going to work for me. You have to accept that challenge that they're giving you. Do this to help you. And for you, I believe you said earlier, journaling. A lot of people don't understand that. They think that's a weird thing to do, write down stuff. Right. But every deployment I was on, I journaled every time, every day. I wrote something in a, either on a computer or on a notebook. So I have all these journals all around. I still have to put together to make it into a memoir, I guess, so I can share my soldier stories, not mine. It's their stories. And right. like you said before, we're there for them. They're, they're the people that make us better anyway. Right. The better our team is, the better the leader is. And once you realize that as a leader, you treat them better and they, in turn, work harder to make the next generation better, which is what you're trying now to push that uh, onto them as well, to keep that knowledge going. Hey, if you treat your your people right, they'll treat you right, and you'll become the next leader. You can sit back on the couch and watch it happen. Yes, absolutely. This is how you stand in the background. This is how you just really just watch everything just evolve around you and just pull the strings. It's so many soldiers that I had from when they was a private. Now they're warrant officers. Now they're lieutenants. Now they're uh, first sergeants. Now, you know, it's just amazing to me. And they all call and thank me for the influence that I had over them and just showing them the way of how to get to where they are today. And it's just phenomenal. It just, I feel like a proud dad sometimes. And, and that's humbling too, when they come back yeah. and say, thank you. Cause you thought the whole time, maybe I was too hard on these guys and gals. Maybe, maybe they're going to have be up in a tree trying to kill me someday. But, right. and then all of a sudden they come back, thank you for doing that for me. You really helped me out. And you're shocking all moments right there. Whoa. All right. That just got bombed like Baghdad. This is awesome. <laughs> Yes, very much so, man. I, I, I enjoy every bit of it, man. It's just like, uh, it's okay it's, it's okay to be hard, but just make sure you're fair in the process. It's okay to, you know, uh, even Superman had to be Clark Kent sometimes, <laughs> you know? He didn't always walk around with this S on his chest. Sometimes he had those glasses on and was Clark Kent. So it's okay for you as the leader to do the same thing. Yeah, put your glasses on, have your pocket protector in, and, and just, just watch. <laughs> Just sit back, relax, enjoy the show sometimes and, and listen to them. Don't just don't sit there just ready to say the next words. Just sit there, listen to hear. So right. you can actually hear what that soldier is saying. Because a lot of times they'll tell you what's wrong with them if you listen. Right. Absolutely. So some people listen to respond. They don't listen to understand. 
And what we have to do as leaders is listen to understand where the soldier is coming from because they might not have the right words. Like I said before, we don't all come from the same background. Our flow of communication is different. Word has meanings. And what I might say, I might have a different meaning to you where you're from, but at the same time, this is what I'm trying to say. This is what I need you to understand. Right, and getting that context across is sometimes it's harder than a lot of people think. Yes. I can say that car is blue and you might not understand what I'm saying. We don't right. call it a car, we call it a vehicle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so right. it just depends on, like you said, where you come from, your morals, your backgrounds, uh, how your parents raised you or your, your family raised you, how your community raised you, and then what they, how they spoke to you and then how others speak to you now. And that's an evolving thing we all had to do once we were in the military as well, because military speaks totally different. Uh, it's a totally different language. Uh, the Army writing style is way different than anything you'll ever write in life. Right. And, and it takes 37 takes to get the same thing that you wrote the first time approved, even though they got kicked back. But you got to you get used to it after a while. Here, I'm just going to hand you this in because you can hand it back to me. Thanks. Yeah. Just do it because I don't know what you want. You won't tell me until it comes back four times. And I'm sure you've seen that as plenty of times, especially sitting in the seat and trying to get things past the Sergeant Major. Hey, Sergeant Major, here's this. Nope, that ain't good enough. No, no, yeah. that ain't right. And then you hand the first thing you say, handed them the first time. Yeah, that's this is exactly what I want. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for reading it the first time. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. Uh, I think for a lot of leaders nowadays, uh, they don't take the time. They take the time to focus on everything else. But um, what they don't realize is that Failure is, is only when you give up. Failure is not when you don't get it right. And sometimes you won't get it right. So a lot of times we have those fears of not succeeding in certain areas because somebody told us no, or somebody told us this is not right, or this is incorrect. And that just messed with our self-doubt that we already had because of the position that we're in. And it can just lead to other things that we might face in our lives and or our careers as far as who we need to become as leaders. Exactly. And, and I think uh, you've, you're an example of what is right and what is should be right in the world and get, trying to help others. As you, you've seen the wall, you've jumped over it, you knocked that wall down, you beat the darkness and it didn't take hold of you like it, it wanted to. You were able to fight that. You fought your career, you fought your whole career, and now you're fighting to help others get through their career. And also as they transition, they can look to you for your success story now. This is right. what you did to make it through that uh, boots to suits a thing or boots to sweatpants and hoodies in the house. If whatever you do is because pro professional professional attire is whatever you make it. I believe and a, a suit right. doesn't make you professional. It just makes you sound like bought a suit. It, if you, I wear a hoodie and, and accomplish a mission, I'm accomplishing a mission. I'm professional. I still say a certain no ma'am and things like that. So if you can give advice to that uh, mid career uh, soldier or the person uh, transitioning right now three things you can tell them to be successful, not just in their career, but in life. In life. Oh, that's, that's a powerful one. Um, one, I would say, um, be kind to yourself. You know, you're not going to always meet that mark. You're not going to always get it right. You're not meant to be perfect. Be kind to yourself, accept whatever you experience or go through. Don't let that stop you from meeting the challenges that you might face. And, uh, another thing I might say is just, uh, Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself because you'll be you're the biggest investment that you will ever make. And if you don't take the time to really take the opportunity to invest in you, you won't be successful nowhere else in your life. Um, and then also uh, another thing is just uh, make sure that you um, just really go through the motions of just starting now. Don't, don't wait until you uh, somebody else do it or you wait till the perfect time. There is no such thing as the perfect time. Now stands for no opportunity wasted. And as long as you're sitting on whatever gift that you might have or purpose that you want to fulfill or dream that you want to uh, achieve, you will never achieve it. I'm just going to say that right now. All you're doing is procrastinating on something that could have been your future of uh, a better way of life for you and your family. Exactly. All three of those are awesome and Hopefully the audience takes heed to them and shares them with those who they know, because that's all three of those are key points to make it out of, out of your own way, I believe I like to call it. So a lot of times, like you said, you, get, you procrastinate. If you don't chase the dream, the dream's not going to chase you. You can say, hey, let's do this. You got to be on top of that dream. You got to be on top of everything. If you have an idea in the morning, write it down and do it. If not, it, it becomes a wasted opportunity. Uh, 
So Sylvester, what's the best way for someone to get in contact with you if they want to just chat with you or if they want to just get you on their show? Oh, absolutely. So you can easily go on my website. It's SylvesterJenkins.com. If you go on there, by the way, you will receive a free ebook on nine ways to develop mental toughness. And uh, it's a simple book. Uh, really help you step by step. It got action steps and everything else in there in order to help you develop your mental toughness. But you can reach me on there. Uh, I'm on all social media platforms from Facebook all the way to LinkedIn. And you can just shoot me a message if you would like. I'm, I'm gladly open to sit down and have a conversation and see how I can either better help you to uh, thrive instead of just survive or to help you to uh, reach that peak or that next level that you're looking for. Outstanding. Thank you uh, for sharing that with the audience. And where can they pick up your book, uh, Winning the Battle Within? Uh, yes, you can pick up Winning the Battle Within. On, it's currently out on Amazon. It's on Amazon, Kindle. You can find it in any one of those locations and just easily purchase the book. If you would like an autographed copy, you can just go to my website and just order it off there and you'll receive an autographed copy of the book. Outstanding. Uh, thanks again, Sylvester, for getting us linked in together, even though we live like the 15 miles apart here right in town. I drive right past you all the time going to work. So it's great to link in and see you face to face here. I probably see you in Walmart. So it's good to know that I can go give you a high five now. You know, if you want to call the dogs, call the dogs. If not, we'll just uh, say the silent prayer. Hope it works out tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I just want to thank you for the opportunity and the time, Rich. It's been a great conversation. I appreciate your, uh, you allowing me on your platform in order to like reach others and then also just have dialogue with you. Outstanding. Thank you, Sylvester. Thank you.